Just hear me out. First question came from my guy, Matthew. So recently, we have been without Mandrews for a few weeks and our offense has not slowed down that much. What say you? We trade Mark to the Chargers for Keenan Allen. Her Herbert loved Mark last Pro Bowl and feels that's what he needs. We get a proven number one for Lamar and we groom up likely and Cola to take his spot. What do you think? As always, much love, man. God bless and hope you and the fam are doing well. Wow, this may be um this may be one of the craziest questions that we have ever gotten. I do appreciate you for sending it. But this may have been one of the craziest questions that we've ever gotten. But the crazy part is, is that I've heard a few, a few, not many, which is a good thing in my eyes. But I've heard a few people actually talk about possibly trading Mark and, and no, no. First off, why would you want to trade one of the Ravens, one of Lamar's, probably his best weapon? Why? And, and. In my opinion, I feel like this offense could use more weapons. Why would you want to make them have less? Why would you want to take... And I, I did see a, the thing, oh, we should get him a number, a proven number one wide receiver. That part, I agree with that 100%, but you don't have to take Mark Andrews out to bring a proven vet wide receiver in. That's... This is nasty. Yeah, this feels like a dream. Next question came from my guy, Nicholas. He said, hey, Graven, how you been lately? It's been a long minute since I sent a, in a question. Kind of reminds kind of reminds me of that Stephen Means video you did a while back and how you said you never know what someone is going through, so be kind to everyone. I've been battling a super aggressive uh, brain cancer this year. Oh. Mm. Oof. Sorry to hear that, man. Mm. Wow. I didn't know that. Because, yeah, you, 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 you never mentioned it in any questions or anything like that, man. I, I, that's real though, man. But he said I was going through, oof, mm, mm, wow. Oof, he said I was going through radiation and chemo last year when all the Ravens players were dropping like flies due to injury. Man, I was extra sad last year, but today is a good day. I'm cancer free. Oof, mm. That's good. That's really, really good, man. Mm. Oof. He said, I'm cancer free, and today is my very last day of chemo. I was only 27 when I was diagnosed. They told me I only had a few months to live. Man, that was terrifying. But since this is supposed to be a question about the Ravens, wow. Mm. Man. Mm. That's real right there, man. Mm. That's real. That is real right there, man. Well, I'm happy for you, man. That you you got through it. I'm happy for you. And and I appreciate you sharing this, man. Cause that's real. For real. So I'm I'm glad to know that you're doing uh, better. Obviously, uh, he says since this is supposed to be a question about the Ravens, I guess I should stop talking about myself and ask the question. Nah, you're good, man. You you're good. So I I, I appreciate you sharing that with us, man. Mm. But yeah, happy happy for you that you uh mm. that that you making it, man. That you're doing your thing still. So. Keep that up, man. I appreciate it. Uh, he said, now on a scale uh, from 1 to 10, how concerned are you about this Ravens wide receiver room after uh, the Rashad Bateman injury? I was concerned about the depth there before he got hurt. 
I agree, I was too. Uh, now I think teams can just double Mark Andrews and cover Duvernay, and that alone bottles up the Ravens' passing attack. Other players are going to have to step up, and I'm not sure if the Ravens have the right guys or the right offensive coordinator that can compensate for that lack with a creative passing game. Hashtag team, keep it clean. Hey, uh, I, I appreciate you, man. Um, yeah, that's definitely uh, a big concern. Um, like even the previous question was talking about with the injuries. Um, injuries can... Uh, change everything and and again you, you brought up last year last year uh it showed that you can never be prepared enough at whatever position um so you always want to try and, and again you can't have everybody everywhere but you can you can't step it up you can step it up and you can do more um so yeah we just i don't hope ravens guys stay healthy man because they're dependent on um at the end of wide receiver room i mean we could throw they're not receivers, but they catch passes. The tight ends, too. They, depending on Mark Andrews, um, Isaiah Likely, uh, Josh Oliver, Charlie Kolar, Nick Boyle, kind of. That's all the tight ends. So they, they got a lot of depth there. Um, but wide receiver, uh, Deshaun Jackson, 35-year-old Deshaun Jackson. Couldn't even finish the Saints game. Um, Tylen Wallace, who they've had inactive a lot. James Prochet, um, he's just... He had been inactive a lot over the years. Well, not a lot over the years, but they just, they not invested in him like that. Uh, Demarcus Robinson, he been solid, man. Uh, Devin Duvernay, who, like, the use of Devin Duvernay is just so weird and it's just so, like, it's so inconsistent how they use Devin Duvernay. I feel like he could be doing so much more, but they, like, they don't be using him like that. Every other game they use him. He'll go off one game, then they won't use him for the next. And he'll go off one game, then they won't use him for the next. Um, but, yeah. So, I'm concerned. I mean, and I, and I agree. I, I share those same sentiments that going just going into the season, I was concerned, um, too. So, I agree with you on that. Um, but, yeah, you just got to have some, like, vitamins on the sideline or something for the Ravens players so they could stay healthy or something. Just have uh, for them hamstrings, had them do extra stretches, Pilates or something. I don't know, just... Had him be ready because it's 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 thin there. It's very very thin, and uh, we just gotta hope for the best. But hey, we we appreciate you. Forget the question. We appreciate you, uh, and we're glad that you you doing you doing good, man. So that's it's always good to hear uh, stories like that uh, with people going through a lot, um, but winning, but still winning. And, and still still making stuff happen. So we happy for you, man. Next question came from Jamie. He said, Jamie B here in Graven. Before my short question, I want to take the time to thank you for your content and what you go through to do it. But also thank Mrs. Engraven and your twin Carter for allowing you to do it. And Pookie. <laughs> thank you, man. I appreciate that a lot, man. Thank you. Uh, he said, you really help team keep your clean members get through their day with informative Ravens information uh, and even more important life information. So thank you so much. Now, I, I think I, I really appreciate this a lot. man. Uh, you see, my question to you is, who do you think we will sign at wide receiver? Because we are thin and you know who's out there. Uh, respect your opinion and keep it clean uh, and kind as you always do. Thanks. Appreciate that, Jamie. Thank you. Um, we'll see this off season. We'll see this off season. I mean, um, it's so early. It's, it's really early. Uh, and we don't know who's going to be available, who's going to be a free agent, who's going to be surprise cuts. Uh, and, of course, there, there'll be some trades, as they always are. Then there's the draft. And I mean, I think it's just it's, it's, it's too early to think about that right now. Next question came from Elijah. He says, so with Roquan Smith getting traded to us, what if they decide to keep Patrick Queen and move him to the weak side linebacker position? I mean, then he don't have to worry about play calls or anything. He can just ball because these two would be a good Duo. Hope the family is doing good and everything is going great for you. God bless. I, I really appreciate y'all and y'all positivity, man. For real. Even besides the whole question, I, I really appreciate y'all just always asking about the family and stuff. I, I really appreciate that a lot. Um, but yeah, hey, I, I would love it. I, I keep saying it. I would love it. I, I don't expect them to because Eric DeCosta be trading people earlier rather than later, um, especially if he don't plan on resigning them. But I, I would love if they did that because... Roquan Smith, command the middle, Patrick Queen. Yeah, he he could just be more free. He could be more free to do it. I mean, we saw how they did in that, that Saints game. Like, they were feeding off of each other. It was such a beautiful thing to watch. And I would love to see that for years to come. But 
the Ravens, they got business to handle. Next question came from my guy Jared. He said, Hey, Graven, hope you and the fam are having a or having or had a relaxing and very enjoyable vacation, depending on when you read this. I like how he put depending on when you read this in bold because he know we be getting to some questions late. But here we are. I appreciate that though, man. We're gonna get straight into it. This isn't as much a question as it is a mini rant slash message to Ravens fans. If the current Ravens philosophy does not chance Oh, I think he meant does not change. I want Lamar to leave Baltimore. I'm not saying this as a Lamar hater. I want the best for him. The best for Lamar is not to play in an organization where defense gets all the praise and attention. The Baltimore Ravens do not deserve Lamar Jackson straight up. If their philosophy doesn't change, they have no business having Lamar on the squad. If they continue to not give anything up to get established veteran top tier wide receivers and they don't get Gregory out of Baltimore, hope the best for Giro though, LOL, then Lamar should leave. I'm not saying Lamar isn't worth the money. The money. I'm saying, however, it would be a big waste of money to pay Lamar all he wants, then give him one leg, Rashad Bateman, Mr. Jet Sweep King, and a mix of 35-year-olds and rookies as his weapons. But then, also give Lamar great tight ends, not for Lamar's benefit, but for the benefit of the play caller. I want the best for Lamar Jackson, but it doesn't matter how great he is if the Ravens' philosophy doesn't change. He has no business being here. Even if the philosophy doesn't change, look at Aaron Rodgers. Washed or not, that offense is bad, real bad, because they don't have top-tier wide receivers. Yeah, hey, I, I mean, this was before the game um, yesterday. Uh, they 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 finally woke up, finally. But overall, this the Packers offense this year has been big yikes. But anyway, he said. I also want to say it's not a crime to have the Ravens' current philosophy. They won two Super Bowls with it. But if they keep that philosophy, they shouldn't even try to sign Lamar because it would be a disservice to him. If Lamar was on the Chiefs or Bills right now, it would be utter domination. In the words of LeBron James, not one, not two, not three, not four. Five. You get what I mean Also hope you and the family enjoy your time in Tampa Because you might be going to some Lamar Jackson home games there next year <laughs> Wow That's real though He said uh, thanks for your hard work engraving We all see it We really appreciate everything you do Let's go Ravens and let's go Lamar Appreciate that Jared This, this, this was a fun one um, And yeah I mean I don't want him to leave, but I, I do see what you're saying. Um, I just I was talking to my guy about it. I've talked to y'all about it plenty of times. I just don't see Lamar Jackson reaching his full potential ever uh, with the Baltimore Ravens um, because I, I just don't see it the way that they do things. Um, again, they, they're not they're not a bad team. They're not a bad organization. They're, they're not bad, but the as far as offense wise, the, the, their philosophy is just. It's very outdated. It's very old school and whatnot. And it's like, you, you got this Lamar Jackson at the quarterback position. You, you, I, a lot of us have just wanted them to really take full advantage of that. And they haven't. And I don't think they ever will. Next question came from my boy Kevin. He said, Angry Man, I, I see why. And I'm so glad that they got Roquan Smith. They got him not only to stop the run and cover, but to also tackle Josh Allen and Patrick Mahomes. That's gonna be big i'm happy to be a new patron and god bless your family kentucky cobblers coming soon hey let, let me know um but yeah man that's that's a good point because um, don't nobody want to tackle josh allen or patrick Mahomes. but I, I think one of the biggest reasons why a lot of people don't want to tackle uh josh allen and patrick mahomes is because they are quarterbacks but they're not only quarterbacks they're nfl darling quarterbacks so they are reaching the status. Uh, well, Patrick Mahomes already there. I mean, Josh Allen, he's, he's pretty much there too. To where they can look at a ref after they get tackled. Perfect, clean tackle. They can look at the ref, and the ref would be like, oh, okay, my fault. Let me throw the flag. So I, I think NFL defenders are just scared. They don't want to get flagged. They don't want to get penalized for playing football. Oh, and another question that also came from my guy, Kevin. He said, I'll solve the wide receiver position. Uh, I, I think I can solve our wide receiver position issues for the rest of the year. Make your short pass game an extension of your run game. I agree. Uh, more quick hitches and three wide receiver screens. I 1,000% I, I agree with that. Um, get that short passing game going a lot more uh, than you have been. So, yeah, I'm, I'm on board with that all day. He said, make King and Drake a wide receiver when J.K. and Gus come back. <laughs> Problem solved. Hey, I don't know about that part, but he can't catch. He got good hands. Um, but I, I would I would say could involve him in a passing game, in the check down game, as Lamar has been doing. Um, I wouldn't say make him a wide receiver, but, yeah, you could get him uh, some open passes, some screens and whatnot. You, you can give him some, some open space in the field. Next question came from my guy, D3. Shout out to you, man. He said, good morning. Uh, engraving the team, keep it clean. I hope all is well with you and yours. I got a quick observation that I wanted your opinion on. With the infusion of energy and tackling ability that Roquan Smith brings to the Ravens, can you imagine him, Patrick Queen, and, oh, jo oh I forgot about him. 
He said, and Josh Ross on the field at the same time once he returns off of injured reserve. There's a lot of linebackers out there. <laughs> oh, that's a whole lot of linebackers out there. But he said, if so, who do you think will be taken off the field during this time, which will definitely affect our three safety sets on running downs? As always, thank you for your content and your attention to detail. I don't know, I don't know if I got much attention to detail. I'll be forgetting every little detail, but I, I appreciate you. Um, I don't, man. Well, I mean, I guess if they play like a a, a four three, they could, but or even a three. But I just, I don't, I don't envision many opportunities for all three of them to be on the field at the same time, like Roquan Smith and Patrick and Josh Ross. I, I just can't see it because you got Tyus Bowser who could be out there. You got Malik Harrison, and I know they really like Josh Ross, obviously, because he he made the team. Um, but I just I don't see any scenario where all three of them are out there at the same time. Um, I could see scenarios where it's just like it's, it's two of them. Um, and then if, say, for instance, the Ravens and hopefully we do get to see the situation. Uh, say, for instance, it's the Ravens. It's a blowout game. Ravens just dominated. Then they'd be like, all right, Roquan, hey, come come chill for a little bit. Hey, uh, Patrick Queen, you, you chill for a little bit. And then it's more uh, Josh Ross and Malik Harrison and stuff like that. But I, I just don't see all three of them all out there at the same time. Revealing identity. Next question came from my guy, Kogan. He said, hey, Graven, glad to hear you enjoy the vacation with the family. You're always grinding for the flock, and it was well-deserved. I appreciate it. Uh, he said, anyway, we've been talking about how their identity has been missing or fractured this year. <laughs> What's it? A fractured identity. And, and it seems to have come out in full this past game. The defense and running game really coming together, and it's nice to see us hold down the lead comfortably. The only egregious play I could really point to is the defense not playing to the whistle on the Saints' only touchdown. As much as I would love to see us get some weapons for Lamar, which he deserves, and run a more spread offense, that's just not who we are going to be with the powers at B the rest of the season. That's true. Uh, all we can ask for at this point is that we keep stacking wins, playing mistake free football, and make some noise in the playoffs, which I think is entirely possible. I agree. Great points. Uh, he said, best case scenario, we make it to the AFC Championship game or further and Giro gets a head coaching job somewhere and we have a chance to bring in an OC that will evolve this offense. Also, assuming a certain re-signing is made. <laughs> best case scenario, I think, would be Ravens winning the Super Bowl. Um, but as far as the, the, the Giro part, offensive coordinator ain't going to mean nothing. Because not that it's not going to mean anything, but it's just... You mentioned it earlier. You, we talked about um, the powers that be. That's Bashadi, EDC, Harbaugh. The offense, the, the philosophy is going to remain the same as long as those guys are in charge. So even if you bring in another offensive coordinator, it's going to be the same thing. It's going to be run heavy, run heavy, defense, limited passing game. So I, I don't I, – another offensive coordinator, in my opinion, is, is just not going to change that. Cause we, we've seen it already. We've seen offensive coordinators come and go. And there's been a lot of the same stuff. But anyway, uh, he said, sorry for the long message. But one more thing. As much as I wouldn't mind us bringing in Odell because we sure could use a depth, I don't think we would be willing to pay his market value, especially given his, in his injury history in the past few seasons, given the need across the league. Yeah, I, I don't think Ravens are going to bring in Odell. I, I, I never thought they would. I wouldn't mind if they did, but I never thought they would. Uh, he said, but if we do land him, then we should definitely sit him re regardless of his health status in our last game against the Bengals because they own his ACLs. Have a good week engraving it just like Bashadi's wallet. We'll need to be this offseason, hopefully the bye week before the price keeps going. Mm, well, too late for that. I'm out. Appreciate it, Kogi. Receiver FOMO. This question also came from my guy, Kogan. He said, I hope all is well. It was nice to see the Vikings take it to the Bills, even though that wasn't the only opponent they had that day. And I know you know exactly what I mean. He's talking about them refs. Yeah. Uh, I was rooting for our NFC Purple Brethren for multiple reasons, but mainly to see them put a damper on the NFL's narrative to propel the Bills forward. But anyway, watching the game gave me some serious FOMO on what it is like to tr have a truly elite number one receiver that can take over a game and an offense philosophy to match. I also think it's pretty hilarious when members of the flock float the idea of trading for Jefferson. There is no way on earth the Vikings would ever give up a player of his caliber or that the Ravens would even come close to offering what he would be worth when it would be time for him to re-up. Anyway, you and the fam have a good rest of your week. And just like the Ravens will always be under EDC when it comes to elite wide receiver free agent trade acquisitions, I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> I couldn't even finish that with the pettiness. Um, yeah. Hey, Justin Jefferson, man. Amazing. Uh, uh, amazing. Like, he just... He took over. He took over in a big way. He took over in a major way. He was just crazy with it, man. And and, and shout out to Kirk Cousins too, because somebody had to throw in the ball. There was there was one play though. It was funny. It was in overtime. Kirk Cousins literally like it looked like he closed his eyes and just threw it to the sideline to to the area where Justin Jefferson was at. 
Just just Jefferson went up and got it. And again, uh, that's what elite receivers can do for you. They can help you out. They can make your job easier. You make a mistake, they can correct it a lot of times. Um, and it's just, it, it's such a, a beautiful thing to, to see. And it's just a beautiful thing to watch. And just to watch how his career has been. And, and they still, again, they when he came in, they still had Adam Thielen. So they had um, they had an established guy, not an elite guy, but better than solid. Um, but they said so they had an established guy, but they brought him in and they built him up. And, and again, it's, it's about their philosophy, too, because they still had a run game with um, with Dalvin Cook and whatnot when, when he would be healthy and whatnot. Uh, and and uh, Madison, when they had him, too, I'm not sure if they still got Madison, but. It's just it's been nice to see Justin Jefferson really just continue to go off. <laughs> Receiver crisis potentially on the horizon. Next question came from my guy Tyler. He said, "In Raven, hope all is well with you and the fam. I am more than concerned, as most Ravens fans are, that we are heading towards a crisis at the receiver position. This is not me standing on my soapbox screaming, sign OBJ. Although I would love to see it. No, this is more so being concerned yet really being a concerned yet realistic Ravens fan about the state of the receiver room. Just in the past week, we learned that Bateman was having season-ending surgery." Um, D. Rob had been a game time decision in that uh, Saints game, uh, and the Jack Deshaun Jackson, uh, unsurprisingly, was pulled from that game due to a hamstring injury. Given how much of a blow the receiver room has already taken with one major injury already, it leaves me concerned that if one of our other guys, which I shall not speak into existence, were to get injured, we would be in a, in a real bind. We don't have much cap space, and if OBJ is looking for a solid multi-year contract, I don't see the Ravens ponying up and paying the man. Shout out to Lamar and Roquan. However, we could already have a potential in-house option being Isaiah Likely. I think we all know the Ravens love them some tight ends, but... Likely has the ability to play more of a Aaron Hernandez style role where he lines up as a tight end outside a receiver and in a slot. My question is, would you be OK if Likely were to play that dual position role or totally switch to the receiver position? Uh, thank you for always providing that fire content. And like LJ, if they don't pay up, I'm out. <laughs> now, as far as Likely, um, Ray Ravens might not really have a choice because they uh, they they are very thin, like you mentioned. And it, they, they just an, an injury away, man. An injury away from being even more thin. Um, they went into the season really thin at the position, um, and they've had their, their struggles. They've had their, their injuries and stuff too. Rashad Bateman, he had been dealing with stuff for like really for the longest, man. Um, but and now he's of course he's gone for the year. Um, so with, I mean, with likely you, you, you got him, he's healthy. So, I mean, you got no choice, but to use him as much as you possibly can. Next question came from Greg and Bimo. He said, it's a good win over the Saints. I don't get why there was no flag on one of the Saints defenders when after likely caught the touchdown, many steps later, he was pushed for no reason at all after the score, but it is what it is. Oh, I didn't even see that. Um, he said, I was impressed with stopping Kamara who, since he got healthy after the rib injury in September, he's been playing great the last several weeks. Oh, well, up to the Saints, the Ravens game. Uh, I think getting healthier with Bowser back and Marcus Williams and Ajabo possibly playing soon, the defense could play like a type f top five consistent defense again, again. But there's one guy with his freaky talent that needs to step up, in my opinion, in the pass rush for this defense to become very special. And that's a doubt for your way. What have been your thoughts on him so far? Um, I've just been surprised. Uh, I would say surprised because... I really thought that this year he was really going to um, make this, like, big jump, especially after he, had, after he did last year. I know last year he started off hot, he was loud, then he got really quiet toward, like, the end of the year, and we didn't really hear from much from him. Um, but then this year I was expecting him to really take a, a leap, big leap forward. Um, and I'm just, I'm just hoping maybe in this, this second half, after the bye and everything, that this second half of football, hopefully a dot fell away. Uh, will really start to really find his footing on his defense, especially with Bowser being back, and maybe we get some extra motivation with David Ajabo finally playing whenever he does play, um, and he can really start to, to to show himself. Next question came from my guy Jonathan. He said, "Hey, Graven, hope you're having a great weekend. Hope all is well with your family." Now, I wanted to know what your thoughts on uh, what are your thoughts on if this year, hopefully, it comes to pass that the Ravens win the Super Bowl. Do you see the Ravens keeping Greg Roman? No, I don't. I think this is the last year for him, regardless of what happens. Good, bad, happy, sad, whatever happens with the Ravens, I think that Greg Roman is out after this year. Uh, and he said, uh, do you think the Ravens ultimately let him go? Or do you think they would elevate T. Martin as OC? What are your thoughts? Um, no, I, I think he's gone no matter what. As far as T. Martin, they do like to promote from within. Um, would they give T. Martin a shot, though, at offensive coordinator? They may. They may, because maybe they told him they got a plan in place for him. Maybe they did the whole little EDC thing. Um, where EDC got an opportunities, uh, got calls and stuff, but he's like, nah, I'm gonna be the GM soon. 
Uh, maybe that's because I know, was it the Bills that called T. Martin for off- offensive coordinator position? I think it was the Bills, I believe. Um, well, he had an interview. He had an interview with them for offensive coordinator position, but he stayed with the Ravens. I don't know if he just didn't get it or he decided to stay with the Ravens or what. I, I'm not sure what happened with that. But um, I think he could have a possible opportunity uh, to get that because, again, they, they do like promoting from within. So we'll see. Last question on this episode came from my guy, Elijah. He said, I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, what's up, Ingram? Hope you and the family are doing well. Glad your voice is back after the Tampa game. You sounded just as bad as I did after the Giants game. LOL. Oof. And that, that was in a loss. So I know that was tough. But anyway, he said, last time I sent an email was after the game and I predicted a win streak. We took care of, a, of the pre-buy games. Now, hopefully the squad delivers more wins the rest of the season. With the race for the division still not secured, I'm not even considering us getting a first round bye. However, I'm looking at our possible pathways to the Super Bowl. Will we have to go on the road once, twice, or all three times this postseason uh we can be the better record team and the tiebreaker who have gone on the road to the afc south winner we can also possibly be hosting the Bengals. they lost to the jets and dolphins or chargers the upset pick lol most likely Bengals because i just believe chargers will find some way to blow their own playoff chances my friend and i were talking trash to each other and because watson and the browns aren't looking good this year he basically downed my squad talking about we not winning because we will have to go on the road against the titans bills and chiefs now i'm i'm the one who loves the challenge but that's not the pathway i want to have to go to make a super bowl run uh, i'd rather host one or two playoff games with every game counting in postseason drawing near uh, what matchups would you want to see us in during the postseason uh which games will excite you the most me man I- i'm with it for whoever man as long as they get in i, I really don't like care i mean it's- it-, it would be a playoff game so I- i'm gonna be excited regardless man like straight up i, I just i don't i don't care who they go up against i'm gonna be excited for that game um, cause that's, that's the ultimate stakes. That's the ultimate pressure game. Uh, that's when we will really see, all right, Ravens, show us how real y'all really are. Show us what you invested in. If it's going to be worth it, what you didn't invest in. Hopefully it doesn't bite you in the butt. Show us everything. And th- that's when coaching got to be extra on point. Execution got to be extra on everything got to be on point. So I, I would be excited for whoever they faced. Um, he said, which teams would you rather, t- which teams would you rather take each other out? So the Ravens won't have to play both of them. I mean, again, I, I don't care because playoffs, like you're going to have to face the best of the best regardless, whether it's in playoff, playoff game one, playoff game two, playoff game three, Super Bowl, whatever. You're going to have to face the best of the best. So you, you can't like, look. oh, well, I hope we don't have to play that. T-. No, man, Th- this is what it's about playing the best of the best and if you are truly one of the best of the best then you'll be able to take out the best of the best in the playoffs so i mean i really wouldn't even be worried about all of that uh he said sorry for the long dissertation and thanks for all your hard work you keep us fans engaged with all your work and dedication shout out to team keep it clean and engraving much love now i appreciate you elijah yeah this feels like a